and welcome to another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, from MrGoff.com. Today's video focuses on evaluating the costs and benefits of specialisation for countries. Let's start with the benefits. One of the first benefits is that by specialising in the industries where they have an advantage, a country can become more efficient. Specialised countries can gain economies of scale by investing in research and development or putting in place the best possible infrastructure to support certain industries that they're going to favour. One of the UK's specialisms is producing cars. Firms in the auto industry benefit from a concentration of firms. That is because major producers have an array of suppliers really close to them so that they can access their materials on short notice and at a lower cost. The UK also benefits from its strong reputation for producing automotive engines. Another specialism of the UK is pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceutical firms benefit from being able to collaborate with some of the world's greatest universities. Both of these industries benefit from the excellent transport infrastructure in place in the UK, allowing them to get the supplies that they need and export their goods. The next benefit of specialisation for countries is the fact that increased output in an industry may result in more investment and job creation in that industry. In developed nations, this tends to be high paying skilled jobs which increase average incomes, leading to higher demand and promoting growth. The UK is at the forefront of offshore wind technologies with an industry that is growing at a rapid rate producing a large number of high skilled jobs. When countries specialise, they will end up with a surplus of the goods that they are specialised in, but they will need to import the rest. Therefore, with specialisation, there is a greater need for trade between countries. More trade means more choice for consumers that have more products to choose from. If specialisation causes incomes to rise, that means more income tax for the government. Additionally, with more trade and higher output, more tax will be collected from the business's profits and from VAT. This additional revenue can be invested into improving public services such as health and education, improving outcomes for everyone. That brings us on to the costs of specialisation for countries. We've already seen that specialisation can produce employment, but when that specialist industry goes into decline, workers in that industry may lack the necessary skills to find new work in industries that are currently on the increase. An example of this can be seen in the mining industry when it declined in the north of England. Many of the workers lacked the skills and education to be able to get available jobs at the time. This led to structural unemployment in the area, which still causes problems to this very day. Another possible cost of specialisation for a country is over-dependence. This is where a country is over-reliant on one industry. If the demand for the products from that industry changes, there could be high levels of business failure and unemployment in the country. 40% of the Ivory Coast exports are cocoa products. If demand for chocolate were to significantly change, they could be highly affected. In addition, they face risks from environmental factors such as drought, and competition from other countries that produce cocoa. Overexploitation of natural resources is another great cost that can come with specialisation for countries. If they're used in an unsustainable way, they will not be there for future generations to take advantage of. That is why many countries have strict rules governing areas such as mining, forestry and fishing. Many popular tourist destinations have begun to take steps to limit the number of daily visitors because of environmental damage. Specialising in an industry that generates pollution or causes serious environmental damage brings significant costs to a country. This can be a particularly big problem in developing nations where multinational firms take advantage of looser environmental laws. OK, so having completed the costs and benefits, it's time to evaluate this. 
If a country specialises in what it's best at, then increased choice income and output, as well as more government revenue that can be used to improve the country further, will mean specialisation will be good. However, if that comes at the cost of long-term environmental damage, or it's otherwise unsustainable, or the country chooses a specialism in which it later loses its competitive advantage, leading to resources being wasted, then it may not turn out to be a good thing after all. That brings us to the end of our look at specialisation in countries. I've been Mr Goff for mrgoff.com. I hope you'll join me again soon for another GCSE economics video on the topic of demand. Bye for now.